Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So as my friends at yarnspirations.com. This is the beginner level that I'm going to be teaching it. It is an easy level, which is the next step up, but I'll teach it from a beginner's point of view. You'll need a four and a half millimeter size US 7. Now I put these on the back of my Susan Bates so that when I'm knitting here on camera, it's not banging. And if that bothers you at home, you can do the same thing. I just hot glued those on a few minutes ago. We'll be using one ball of Lily Sugar and Cream, and we're just going to get ourselves started. You're going to see it's a really nice repeat. My goal today is to show you how to cast on, how to get through the beginning pattern, and then take you through the entire repeat, give you the verbal instruction, and tell you how to finish, and then you can also uh, cast off at the end. So we're going to begin today, and maybe a longer tutorial than necessary, but hey, it's beginner level, and let's begin. So let's start by putting the pattern aside and we'll refer to that later and let's get ourselves started with the knitting. We're going to create a slip knot to begin and a slip knot is the starting knot and keep it a little bit of a longer tail so that you can use a tapestry needle to hide in the ends later and what you need to do at this point is to be able to create the slip knot. Sorry that's bothering me. So let's point our finger and wrap around your finger twice. Okay just like that and then take the back over the front and then take the new back and go over the finger and I'll demonstrate that again. Okay so there's your slip knot to begin. So take your uh, finger, wrap twice, pinch, take the back over the front and then take the new back over the finger and just grab any one of the needles and just insert it into the slip knot and pull it and use the strand that's leading to the ball to pull and don't pull it to the point where you're having to secure down a boat to a dock. You want to be able to slide that nicely on your knitting needle. So let's begin the cast on process and I'm going to show you a twist and transfer method that I prefer and if you have another method to cast on by all means use whatever you feel. So the dogs are playing in behind the scenes so if you hear the squeaky toys and stuff that's just what it is. So now what we need to do is grab the other needle and we're going to be looking at this one here. So when we go to slip in this needle, we're going to slip it into the same slip knot. So you're going to just put it into the knot, just open it up a little bit and insert it so that this needle is coming in on the back side. And so when you look at it, you can see that the entire knot is wrapped around both. Now, the way that I like to hold my yarn and we have tutorial specifically for it is that I, I like to wrap around my pinky once and then I like to just put it through so it's over top of my pointer finger like this. So however you want to do it, if you just want to leave it down and do a pinch and throw, you can do that. So I'll just do it the way that I prefer. So I'm going to wrap around the back needle like this. And I want to begin by pushing this needle down and pulling it through like this. And I'll demonstrate this several times. And when I'm going to move this back up, I'm going to use this finger to prevent it from falling off. And I want to just rotate this so that I capture this needle in the slip knot. The dog's licking toilet water. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to continue. So we're just going to grab it. And once it's on, you can slip this out and slide this down. So I'll demonstrate it several more times. So into the next stitch, just go in and stay towards the back so that it's opening up that knot. And you're going to wrap around the back and you're going to just pull it through. Give it enough slack so you have something to work with and then rotate it like this and insert on. This is a twist and transfer cast on method. So go into the last one you just put on, wrap around, bring it through, and cast on. Okay, and you're going to continue to do this. You need a total of 42 of these stitches onto this needle. So wrap and through, come up underneath, and let it go. I'll demonstrate it two more times and then I'll pause. So we're going to pull through, twist, and insert, and one more time. And I'm going to have you do the other 
remaining that will get you to a count of 42 of these on here. As you're filling this needle up, just shift them more down so you have access. And this is the twist cast on, uh, cast on method. And so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll go all the way to 42 and that's where you'll meet me next. So put me on pause now. So I now have my 42 stitches here on this knitting needle. And on the pattern, what we have to concentrate right here is cast on 42 stitches and says knit nine rows of garter stitch, noting the first row is the wrong side. So the garter stitch, all it is, it's just the knit stitch over and over and over throughout the rows. So what I do, I use, I use it right on a pattern, but I didn't this time. Just write down the numbers one through nine, and every time you complete a row, just check it off. And then once we get that done, we can then go through this pattern for the texture itself. What we're doing is we're creating the border of this here, before we start the texture. Okay, so let's begin. Now that we have our 42 on here, we're going to insert and we're gonna do the first nine rows of the as a knit stitch. To do that, let me just move this up, is that I want to stick in the needle into the first loop and so that the needle goes inside the loop and towards the back and it and captures the whole loop inside. We're now going to take the strand and we're going to do exactly how we were casting on, but now it's a full knit stitch. So wrap around the back needle. Just shift it down so that it accesses the yarn that you just wrapped. And if you drop it, just pick it back up. And once this is on this needle, you're going to just slide up a little bit and slide the one that you just went into off of the needle. Once that's done, you go to the next. So go in to it, stay on the back side so it captures it all completely inside. Wrap around the back needle. Shift down so that you can capture that. Shift up and slide off. Okay, so into the next. Wrap. Shift down and slide off. So what I like to do is just kind of push these all so they're all ready to go and lined up near the top of the needle. So it's a lot quicker to be able to slide off. So just go into the next one, stay on the back, wrap, pull through and slide. And you're gonna to continue to go the entire row of doing the knit stitch. So this is the knit stitch and the first nine rows are exactly what you're seeing. You don't hear me counting because I don't need to because every stitch is the same. There are some ways of holding uh, these knitting needles. People do a continental. Um, they su suggest that a crocheter does it. Uh, my mom taught me how to crochet like or knit like this when I was a kid and it's something that I've always maintained. The only difference is see how this is wrapped around my finger. My mom never taught me that. That's something I've, I've picked up in my adult years. So she taught me the pinch and throw method where you just kind of leave it down, you throw it, you go into the stitch, you wrap them behind and you pull through. So it doesn't matter that you decide on how it's gonna work for you, right? There are some people online where they insist that their way is the best way, which is fine. It's great for them, but everybody has their own technique and that's why there's so many out there. So this is the knit stitch and we're gonna to continue to go all the way across. Some people can knit really fast. I'm not one of those person because I don't knit enough to actually justify the speed. And it's not about the speed, it's about the enjoyment of the yarn transfer from a strand and making it into a real project. And because this is a dishcloth, if this is your first knitting project, and you can let me know in the comments below, um, you know, it gives you an application to be able to try something new and then be able to use the project. So continue to knit stitch all the way to the end of the row.
If this one's getting too much, just kind of straighten it up and just shift it down a little bit to give yourself some room. So as I'm finishing up the row, a row, if somebody says you're a slow knitter or makes a comment about it, just tell them that you love the journey and that it's not a race. Some people online are obsessed with the speeds of crochet and knitting and it becomes a, a media talking point, but in the end, it's really just about the journey of the yarn itself. So I'm running out of space. I'm just gonna move stuff down. And you'll notice that once we've gone across here is that, um, the stitches are a lot more relaxed. I find myself getting tensed up a little bit at this moment, so I'm finding myself getting a little more tighter than I wish. And I'm right at the end. And once you're done, everything has been transferred to this needle. So now you just gotta switch hands and we're, and check off that you've done row number one and make sure that everything is just kind of aligned up properly. No spinning, it just makes it easier. And you're gonna find it's gonna get a lot easier to knit. So check off number one and we're gonna just start you on number two and you'll do uh, the rest all the way to nine for me on your own. So I just kind of push things up closer again and it's gonna be a little bit looser than it was in the last row. So now you're going to start another row. This is number two and a straight knit stitch. So when you continue to do knit stitch over and over and over on every row, that's called the garter stitch, which is the fancier word for it, I suppose. And so you're just going to continue to go all the way across. And now it's becoming a lot looser than what you were having before. So if you were tight and you were like, I'm going to quit, you can see now that it's a lot more looser to deal with and the stitches slide a lot more easier because there's um, there's more yarn to work with. So continue to knit stitch all the way to the end of this row. This is number two, and we'll recap at that moment. So I've just finished row number two, so I'm gonna switch it back, just to kind of line things up. And so I need you now to continue to do this until nine rows are complete. So check off number two if, you've done, if you're working along with me and meet me back at the end of number nine, and then we're gonna pick up in the pattern at that moment. So I've now just completed nine rows so we can get rid of this piece of paper and we can go back to the pattern and we're going to start right here first and alternative rows. So that's one, three, five, it's all the odd numbers. They're just gonna be a knit stitch of what you just did. So you're going to do rows number one through 12 and then you're going to repeat that until the whole project uh, measures about eight inches. And then once you have that done, you have to end on a third or a ninth row in order to have the balance. So what you've done now is that you've completed the border section here and we're going to have a border coming up the side on both sides and then you're gonna finish off at the end with doing eight rows of the garter stitch on what you just did. So let's set begin and we're gonna start with row number one and we're gonna start in the pattern itself. I'd like you to also note here, and this is just uh, for your ease, see this strand here? This is considered the right side. So what I'm going to do for myself, because I know, I know myself, is that I'm gonna say right side equals, and I'm gonna say the tail is on right. So if I'm ever questioning where I am, if I know that the tail is on the right here as I'm about to, uh, to knit this, then I know that I'm on the right side of the project. So let's begin and we're gonna start the first row. So row number one, even though we've been doing the garter stitch now for what we've been doing, we're gonna do, do row number one and make it a knit stitch all the way across, which is what you have been doing. So row number one is the knit stitch and please do this all the way across and then we're gonna turn and we'll do row number two together. So no sweating yet, well, at least hope not. So let's begin row number two. So row number two, we're gonna start the pattern and you should know that the first five stitches here and the last five on this side is going to be a knit stitch. So this is what's going to keep it looking in balance 
for the way that the border works and everything else is in between those. So just remember that the gutters of your knitting is going to be five stitches on its own and five and they're always going to be a knit stitch. And so that just makes sense on the way that we're going to do. But let's begin and we're going to start row number two and we're going to begin and I just said the first five is the knit stitch. So let's do the first five. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so the first five are now done. So now we're going to complete the sequence until we get to the last five that need to be having the knit stitch. So we're gonna start counting stuff out. So we're gonna purl all the way until we get to the last five. So you can either count, but it just says, just do it until that the last five are here. So we're gonna do the last five here and we're gonna do a purl. If you've never done a purl, no big deal. The first step is, is to get this yarn that's been in behind the whole time. We wanna just spin it around this needle here and leave it in front. Okay, so it's currently back here. We wanna put it into the front and so then it's in the purl position. When we go to insert now, we're not gonna insert going up like we have. We're gonna be coming in through the top and going in like this. So this needle on this side, right where I'm tapping, is going to be on the front instead of the back and you wrap around that needle and instead of coming forward like we have been, we go down and we push that strand to the back. Okay, and then we slide. And so you can see now that the yarn strand is now in the front, which is where you need it. So you're gonna purl all the way until you get to the last five stitches. So just stay in the front side, wrap, and flick to the back. And every time you get to row number two, this is exactly what you need to do. So in, wrap, flick to the back, and move up. I'll demonstrate it three more times. And last time, and then you can put me on pause. And then what I'll do is I'll see you when the last five loops are left on, and then we'll pick up from that point. So continue to purl across. So I'm now across and I have five stitches left. So I need to knit those. So we've been doing the purling. So see how this strand is coming out towards you? We have to put it in behind. So before you do anything, move this strand in behind here. Okay, you can't go over, you have to go in between. And then you're just gonna knit, stitch, the remaining of the five that are left. And this will be row number two. Okay, let's get ready for row number three in just a moment. So row number three is an odd number. So one, three, five, and etc. all the way up are always a knit stitch across. So you're just gonna start and you see the tail end here is back on the right. So I know I'm looking at the right hand side. And so the right side, we're always gonna do the knit stitch going back. So we're just gonna start and we're gonna do knit stitch all the way for row number three. And I'll be back in a moment and we'll kick you off in number four in just a second. So I've just finished the third row and now you can see the effects of the pattern that is starting to develop. So this is the right hand side, so you'll see that happening. On the other side, you'll still see it as a regular stitch, the garter stitch. We're gonna turn our work and begin number four. So as we begin number four, we know that the first five and the last five are going to be the knit stitch, okay? So that's not changed and then everything else in between that is going to be the sequence. So let's begin and do the first five. So we have one, two, three. So the reason why I'm pulling out, if you haven't noticed, is that sometimes I don't get all the plies. 
So I want to make sure that I'm making that decision as I go. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes. So now there's the first five. Now we're going to go through the sequence of the remaining of this until we get to the last five. So now we're going to purl two. So in order to do the purl, remember what we have to do. We have to get the yarn in front first. Okay, so we're shifting it from the, the, the back to the front and we're gonna purl two. So coming up, so we're gonna say one and two. And then it says to knit four. So if we're gonna do back to the knit, we have to move this strand to the other side again, to, to the back, and we're gonna knit four in a row. And this is gonna start the repeat, so we're gonna have four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And continuing with the repeat then, we're gonna purl the next two. So we're just gonna move the yarn in front first and purl the next two. So one and two, and that was a repeat sequence. So we're gonna start the sequence again. So move the yarn behind and you're gonna knit the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four, and then we got a purl two. So we're gonna move the yarn in front and purl the next two. So we have one and two. And that was your sequence, and I'll show you one more time. Move the yarn in behind and per, uh, knit the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four, and then purl the next two. So move the yarn in front and purl the next two. So we have one and two. So continue that sequence and the purling of the two should be the last two that you do and then you should be seeing the last five. So the last two before the last five should be the purl two. So continue the sequence all the way across and I'll see you back here when the, when we do the last five together. So I'm just finishing the sequence and got my last two purls and that will leave five stitches left. So the last five will just be a knit stitch. So move the yarn in behind and do the knit stitch then for the remaining of the five and this will conclude then row number four. So that's it, and let's turn our work and do number five. So row number five is an odd number. The tail end is on the right-hand side, so that means that number five is just a knit stitch all the way across, which I've demonstrated several times. So just knit all the way, and I'll see you at the end of row number five in a moment. So let's move on to the sixth row, and if you turn behind, this is the right side that you see. You can see the nice sequence. So the sixth row is the same as the fourth, so let's just begin, and we're going to start off with the first five being the knit stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now, we wanna do it the same as the fourth. So if you recall, we're gonna purl two to start. So let's just move the yarn in front and purl two. It's what you've already done, so I don't have to go into too much detail. So purl two, and then the sequence is going to start right after this that you'll carry across until the last five. So get ready and put the yarn on the back and knit the first four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then to finish the sequence, you need to purl the next two. So move the yarn in front and purl the next 
next two. So we have one and two. Okay, so then the sequence is knit four, purl two, knit four, purl two, and that'll take you to the last five that are left. And the last five, you'll just do a knit stitch. So I'll see you there with the last five in just a moment. So don't forget when you start the next sequence, put the yarn in behind and begin your knit four, purl two, knit four, purl, uh, purl two. So at the end of number six, you have the last five left. I've just finished my purling of two, so move the yarn behind and knit stitch the remaining five stitches that are left for row number six. Okay, so that's it. Let's turn to work and do number seven. Okay, seven's an odd number, so we're gonna be back to the knit stitch for the whole thing. You can see this is back on the right side. And so just knit stitch all the way across for row number seven, and then join me back here in a moment for row number eight. So now finishing on row number seven. So we're gonna turn our work and do number eight, and the eighth row is the same as the second row. And if, we, if you recall, the second row is five knit stitches to start, five at the end, and then you're just gonna purl all the way between those points. So turn your work and let's do row number eight. In row number eight, we're just gonna uh, start off with the knit stitch for the first five. So we can count those out together. So we can do one, two, three, four, and five. So there is your border. Okay, so now we're gonna purl the remaining and then the last five that you will have here, you are going to do is the knit stitch to have your border continuing. So you're gonna start with your purl. So you're gonna purl the remaining. So move the yarn in front, as you know, and just start purling and then knit stitch the final five. And I'll leave that final five for you. You should know how to do that at this moment because we've been doing it enough times. So do this for row number eight. So let's begin number nine. Number nine is an odd number. So you're back to the right hand side. You can clearly tell now because your sample shows all the beautiful stitches on the right side. So it's just a regular knit stitch all the way across. So you don't have to worry about counting and just knit. And I'll see you back here for number 10 in a moment. So I'm at the end of number nine. So what you're seeing here when you're going down is that we want to switch the location so we're creating a basket weave kind of look so when we start row number 10 it looks complicated on the way that it's written but we have to maintain our five on both sides of the equation and that's worked into the way that this pattern is written it just is not like five on its own and a five at the end is just already worked in so let's begin number 10 and the same instruction for number 12 so 10 and 12 are the same but i'll demonstrate it twice now let's turn to work and begin number 10. Okay, let's begin row number 10. So instead of just knit stitching the first five, like we have been, we're gonna knit stitch the first eight. So we'll count those out together. So one, two, three, four, Six, seven, and eight. And let's go look at the pattern here. And it say, states then to purl two. So the purling two and the knitting of four still exists. It's just the way that we started. It has to be offset so that it, it, it looks like basket weave. So the next two are gonna be purls. So we need to move the yarn in front first and purl the next two. And this is the start of the sequence. So you got purl two. And then knit the next four. So move the yarn behind and knit the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And let's cover the sequence again. So we're gonna move the yarn in front and purl the next two. And then knit the next four. 
So you're going to continue this sequence. Two, three. Sorry, just the water one always count. Three and four. So we're going to continue the sequence until that you have a total of um, four stitches left. And in the last four stitches, you're going to do the knit stitch. So continue then, you'll purl two, knit four, purl two, knit four. You'll end up with the last four that are left over and you'll knit stitch those. And I'll see you there in a moment. So in keeping with the sequence of purl two, knit four, you just continue all the way until you get to the last four. So you've actually technically just knitted the last four here in the sequence, which is fine. And then you're gonna continue then to uh, knit the remaining of four. If you recall, we started off with knitting of eight in the beginning, so you can see that this will have balance. And so you'll just finish off row number 10, which is with the knit stitch with the final four. Okay, and that's good. And let's turn our work and do row number 11, which is an odd number. So let's do number 11, which is an odd number. And all it is is that it's an odd number. You're on the right hand, right side again, and you are just going to knit stitch all the way across. You don't have to worry about counting. And I'll be right back in a moment to complete row number 12, which is the final of the repeating of the pattern. So let's begin row number 12 which is the final and you can see it's really turning out in the back beautifully this is the right side so number 12 is back to what we did for row number 10 and we're going to start off by just knit stitching the first eight so we have one two three That's four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now we're going to start with the sequence that repeats over and over until you get to the last four stitches. So we're going to purl the next two. So we have one and two, and then moving the yarn back and knit the next four. One, two, three, and four. And I'll show you one more sequence. So we're going to Purl the next two. So one and two. And knit the next four. One, two, three, and four. And once you're going to continue, so you'll purl two, knit four, and you will end up in that sequence of the last four being open. So then you'll knit stitch the final four, which is where I'll pick you up in just a moment. Coming up to the end of number 12, you have the last four stitches and you're just gonna continue to knit stitch those right to the end. And this will complete the whole sequence of rows number one through 12 when it comes to the pattern that is inside the borders of this. And we're going to talk about the repeating next and because everything you need to know has already been done it's been filmed and if you turn it over you can see that one side is looking pretty awesome and your sample would be doing the same thing so let's talk about the repeating and i'll be right back in a second so back in the pattern you're going to repeat the last 12 rows so one all the way through 12 until it measures approximately eight inches and you need to end on a third or ninth row so the third row is right here. And so this is in between a sequence in order to keep things nice and separated. And nine is also between a sequence. And once you have those done, you're going to knit then eight rows of the garter stitch right at the end. And then therefore you're technically done. And you and the garter stitch is just a knit stitch back and forth as you started. So you'll end up with just this at the very end. So you're gonna cast off knit wise. So I'm gonna demonstrate that next. And that's where we're going to end our journey today. So let's pretend that I'm done and I want to knit off 
and I want to bind off. So knit or cast off, knit, uh, bind off, it's kind of the same statement. And we're gonna do it knit wise. So all this means is that we're going to start and we're going to begin to do knitting. And you'll do the first one and you'll shift it off. Next, you're gonna come into the next one and you're gonna knit it like you normally would. And you're gonna shift off. And now you have two loops on this needle that I'm tapping with my thumb. You're going to take the first loop and carefully bring it over top of the other loop on the needles. Okay, don't drop anything like I just did. So we'll try again. Okay, so you're just going to take it up over top of the other one. Just take your time. You're at the end. Just And do that. And then just slide off. So then you're going to knit the next one and you're back to two again on this side. So you'll take the first one and you're going to loop it up over top. So I can see that I've just kind of slipped off. So I'm just going to try again. I prefer to leave stuff like this in the tutorial because not everybody has the finesse down pat and it's better to see a tutorial who's struggling a little bit okay so you're going to do the next one you'll knit coming up and then take this off there you go show you one more time and you're going to do this all the way to the end so knit and you can see it's doing a nice finish for the end. Okay, so you're gonna continue and I will see you at the end of this row in just a few moments from now. And I'll be right back and I'll show you how to weave it in with the tapestry needle at the end. Just trim your yarn going to the yarn ball. Make sure it's long enough that you can get it through a tapestry needle. And just pull that loop up a little bit so that you can feed this yarn through. And that'll cause it to lock so it will not unravel. Okay, and so you're going to notice is that your pattern is gonna look really cool. And you wanna take a tapestry needle in this case and place it on. You can weave it in with a crochet hook or whatever, but it's always going to follow. But a tapestry needle is the best. And you just want to drag it through. And if you can separate the plies of yarn, not just go between the stitches, it's much, much better. And so you'll go through once. And when you pull it, don't change the shape of your project. Okay, and then you'll go back in the opposite direction. And then just the final pull through is just the third time as a charm. So this will look a lot better once it's the full size. This is just a small little swatch today. And then you're gonna trim it and any loose ends that you'll have that you'll have to do that same concept. But overall, it's a great day today. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Wanna know more? Hit that subscribe now.